Hello, Extraordinary Connection family. I do feel like we're forming this lovely community around these devotionals, so I am glad to be back with you after I was on vacation last week. And today I want to share a reflection on what's been going on lately in our state. It's, it's weighing on my heart. The protests in the Capitol, this sense of just not being able to come together on something so simple as protecting life. And I know that we can quibble about the details and I know that it's up for debate exactly what the best way is to, to go about taking care of everyone and slowing the spread of the virus, but also supporting our businesses, our economy, which is also a part of protecting and caring for life. So I'm not saying that there's one cut and dry answer, but I do know that all of the facts and all of the science points to needing to, needing to be careful for a while yet and needing to maintain certain boundaries and parameters. And so I think that our, our leaders are doing their best to, to try to work through that and to protect Michiganders. So not trying to support a certain political agenda, but, but I do believe that we follow a God of life who doesn't want any, any precious human life to be lost unnecessarily. And that's a value that I hold very dear. So I'm grieving right now for the national news that, that our state is making and seeming to so brazenly disregard that protection and care for life, even though I know it's a small minority of people, but it still speaks to some disconnection and darkness that's, that's kind of coming out in, in the worst ways in some of our fellow Michiganders. So I want to read a scripture that expresses some of my grief at this time. And it's from Matthew 23, 37. To 39 where Jesus laments for his home for his people and says Jerusalem Jerusalem the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it how often have I desired to gather you to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And there's another line that I always connect with this passage in my mind. It's funny because I, I almost um, make the mistake sometimes that it's right, right near it. And it's actually not. Um, it's in Luke 19, 41 and 42, but it's also a lament for Jerusalem where Jesus says that, well, he says, as he came near and saw the city, he wept over it saying, if you, even you had only recognized on this day, the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. And then he goes on to talk about the violence and destruction that Jerusalem will experience as a result of its inability to recognize and practice the things that make for peace. At a time like this, when guns are being brandished as, as this symbol of power and might and resisting 
this directive to take care of life and to protect ourselves and each other. I think it's important to focus on how we also need to work better at recognizing the things that make for peace. And whether or not we're gun owners, and I am not issuing any particular judgment about that, but to recognize the ways that we need to beat our weapons in all kinds of metaphorical and literal senses of the word into plowshares, into things that make life. I want to give a shout out to this particular piece of art that I, I've been joking, I really need to give credit because my, um, my friend Corey Simon, a fellow United Methodist pastor, made this woodblock print um, a couple years ago. And um, it's been in so many of my devotionals and music videos now, I really need to give credit to my um, fellow artist in helping spruce up my background. But right now it's particularly meaningful to me. As you can see, it's an image of Jesus breaking an assault rifle over his knee. And it has two lines from scripture, who live by the sword shall die by the sword. And it also says they shall beat their swords into plows and make no more war. Corey makes a lot of beautiful, beautiful prints and paintings, art like these. He also literally beats his swords into plowshares. He has this blacksmithing project of making guns into gardening tools. Um, so you can check out some of his great work, um, his sermons also, um, podcast reflections on his website at disruptivedisciples.com. And in the meantime, I want to share with you a response that I have to that grief over our inability so often to know what makes for peace and a reflection on how we might be able to draw together and feel our common humanness in order to understand what makes for peace and that truly Jesus wants to bring all of us together under his wings. So this is a song I wrote as a response to that Matthew reading called The Gathering. If only 
I don't have easy answers to those questions of how we can seek to recognize and practice what makes for peace. I do want to leave you with a couple questions. In this time of social distancing, of divisions, of a lot of disagreements, and a lot of fear, and a lot of grief, a lot of loss and pain that we're each dealing with in our own ways. What does it mean, what does it look like to let Jesus gather us under his wings? How can we express empathy and solidarity when gathering physically and touching each other have become symbols of carelessness and danger in most cases? And how do we extend Christ's love even to those who are doing harm? How do we speak the truth in love and seek to include them in transformation and reconciliation? I have more questions than answers. But I do know, as I express in that song, that being more present in our own bodies, being grateful for these skin and bones, a place for love to dwell, moving slower, giving more peace and compassion to ourselves is a really, really important place to start. So take a deep breath and feel how Jesus is holding you and gathering you under his wing like a mother hen. And may your practice of peace and love for others flow out of knowing the deep peace of Christ and the fact that you are beloved. Amen.